Hi, I'm Liz Namofsky, host of Finances Personal. Accumulating and paying off debt today is extremely different from what it was in August 1981, when the Bank of Canada rate was 21%. Now, today's low interest rates have created a perception of cheap money, causing Canadians to borrow more money with hopes of paying their debt later. But what happens when interest rates go up? And how do you service that debt? Many Canadians will not have enough cash flow to cover their debt. And sadly, there is a lot of embarrassment and shame associated with debt. Sometimes it can be impossible to get past the shame and become proactive, especially with the pressures of social media. And why do we accumulate debt? And how do we create a budget? And how about our credit history? To help us understand women and debt, budgeting and living stress-free, I'm joined by Laurie Campbell, CEO of Credit Canada Debt Solutions. Laurie, thank you so much for coming today. My pleasure, Liz. Okay, so this is really, really important because this will cover women that are 15 just mm -hmm. starting out and women that are 80 or 90 in their retirement. Why do we accumulate debt? You know, there's a number of reasons that we accumulate debt, and one of the biggest reasons that we see at Credit Canada, believe it or not, is mismanagement. So, you know, some would say, oh, gee, that sounds like a terrible thing, but the, the the great part of that is that we can control it. If it's mismanagement, it means that if we educate ourselves, we use some discipline, we have some financial goals that we set, our chances of overcoming this type of mismanagement is, is quite uh, inevitable. So let me just ask you, mm -hmm. mismanagement, what does that mean? Because it could mean so many different things to so many oh, other yeah. people, okay. right? Okay, so let's talk about mismanagement. Yeah. It means something as simple as not having a budget, uh, not keeping track of your debt and understanding what you have outstanding. It could mean missing making payments on your on your bills, not understanding what credit and interest rates that you have on, on the different types of products that you have, not saving appropriately or not saving the right vehicles. So all of those could be accumulated mismanagement and the results are for, for many women, for example, that they don't realize their financial goals and they somehow feel that it's beyond them. Okay, so how do we make them rethink this and how do we make them understand the whole mismanagement of their money? Well, number one is that, that women need to start to feel like they can be in, in control of their financial futures. And a lot of women may feel that, you know, they've been told that, you know, don't worry about money, it's, it's not for you to worry about. And we see that with an, an older generation. Right. Uh, we see a lot of millennials think, thinking that, you know, they'll never have money, so they don't really, you know, feel it's an important thing for them to understand. And, and women in between that are going through divorce and those types of things feel that they've lost control of their financial situations and therefore they, they're in a situation where they're never gonna be able to gain it back. So what's the best way for someone to actually become financially independent? The best way for someone to become financially independent is not as simple. It's not simple. I mean, there are a number of steps that w women need to take. One is to create a budget. I know it sounds like a four-letter word, but it's not. Create a spending plan if it sounds better than a budget. To find out where your money's going. A lot of women don't even know where their money's going. You know, the kids want this. They've got to pay for that. Uh, you know, groceries they might run out a couple times a week and not really keep track of it. So it's very important to figure out what's coming in and what's going out, and that's where a budget is created. Write down your financial goals. Really visualize where you want to be in one year, five years, and more long term, such as retirement. Those things are very important. Put pen to paper and write it down. And then take a look at your debt. Debt is enemy number one, yes. especially unsecured debt, credit card debt, enemy number one. If you're paying 19 to 24% interest, you got to get rid of that debt as soon as possible and do everything in, in your means and your ability to get rid of that debt so you have more money left over for savings and then you can start to create a savings plan. But there's so many people that say, you know, I don't make enough money. Mm -hmm. Or they'll say, you know, I'll just buy it this time and I'll start doing it next month. Everyone's always, you know, putting rationalizing things, yeah, and, yes. and putting things off to next month. Right, I'll do right. this next month. Yes. So how do you wrap your mindset around it and think, okay, I've got to do this now because this is really important right now? Well, you know, you make a really good point. People are, are, are uh, essential procrastinators that we know that for sure and so we I don't have enough money we hear that all the time it's not a money problem I don't care how much money you make it's not a money problem it's a debt problem right regardless no matter how little money you make that's a major reason to stay out of debt because interest rates are so high that's number one two why are you procrastinating generally I find that people procrastinate because they don't have goals set so maybe you need to start really setting goals and putting them in place and that way you can work backwards to say, how am I going to realize that? I need to get a budget. I need to start paying off debt. And that's where Credit Canada comes in. We can help people set goals. We can help people make a budget. We can help people look at ways to repay their debt. Okay, so let's talk about your people that can help you mm -hmm. do all of this stuff. 
Um, a lot of people think it's going to cost me way too much money mm -hmm. to get my debt under control. What do you charge? Well, our counseling is free. So coming in to, to do a budget, to look at your debt situation, to write down and, and figure out your options and your goals is all free. If we look at a debt repayment program, there could be some fees attached to it, but we always, or most always, are able to get interest stopped. So that's really the big kicker, is the interest is killing people yeah. so much that they're not even making the minimum payment because they can't service the interest. So if you can get that stopped, at least you can get somewhere with the principal and get it worked out and repaid. And I think that's interesting because I want to talk about that because I don't think a lot of people understand what principal is. Right, they don't, no. So why don't you explain it to people? Okay, so let's, uh, here's, a, here's a great way to explain it. You you buy something for $200, mm -hmm. that would be the principal amount that you put on the credit card. If you only make the minimum payment on that and there's an interest rate of 24%, chances are you're going to pay as much as three times for that $200 item over time by only making the minimum payment. So that $200 item is now costing you $600. So what the, uh, the principle would be is to cut this from where you sit today with your statement, stop interest from accumulating any further so you can get back on track, repay that debt, and not have any further interest charge. And I think, you know what, I think you explained it beautifully because a lot of people think, I'll just do the minimum, mm -hmm. or I won't worry about it. Right. And not realizing that, yes, this $200 piece of whatever it is that you've purchased is actually closer to $1,000 now. Exactly. When, when you start you know, accumulating all of the interest payments on top of all the interest payments. Yeah, so let me tell you a story. So I'm driving my daughter and her friend in the car one day and uh, my, her friend has a credit card. And I said, are you paying it off every month? She goes, well, I have about $1,000 on it, but yeah, I pay it off every month. I said, what do you mean? So you're paying it off in full every month? She goes, yeah, I pay what they ask. <laughs> I said, but you're paying only the minimum. And she was like, no, 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 I'm paying what they ask. I said, are you being charged interest? She says, yes. I said, you're not paying the full amount. And what, you're, what that $1,000 is going to cost you over time is probably $3,000. And she did not understand that at all. And this is a bright young woman, a millennial, mm -hmm. um, who really thought that she was, had her act together and knew what she was doing with her credit card. And she really did not understand at all. And that's why we're here today to mm -hmm. discuss this so that everybody, regardless of what their age is, understands the whole thing about debt and budgeting. Lori and I will be back after the break to discuss more on women in debt and getting rid of it here on Finances Personal. Hi, welcome back to Finances Personal. I'm Liz Namofsky. And today we're discussing women and debt in living stress-free with Lori Campbell, CEO of Credit Canada Debt Solutions. Now, Lori, before we went to the break, you were talking about budgeting. Mm -hmm. So what maybe you could explain to somebody the steps for budgeting so that they don't feel that, oh my gosh, it's too overwhelming or I don't have time for it because it's really important to make time for it. It is really important to make time for it. And, you know, we talk about budgeting being a four letter word. Call it a spending plan because you are spending money with a budget. So call it a spending plan and start to track where your money's going. The biggest problem we find at Credit Canada is people have no idea where their money's going. So you ask them, what are they paying for their utility bill? And they have no idea. What are you paying for groceries? Not sure. And on it goes. So for the first month, what we advise is to just keep track of all the money you spend. What goes out? Do what you normally do. Don't start saying, oh, I better not write that down right. because it's not in my budget or, or maybe I should uh, you know, curb the way I'm spending my money. No, just do what you normally do because only then can you figure out ways to cut back. A lot of people will say, I have no ability to cut back. But after they actually track their expenses for a month, they realize they're buying coffee out, they're, they're buying their lunch a couple times a week, you know, they may be going to the grocery store uh, that's more expensive because it's closer to where they live, and on it goes. So once they do that, they can actually categorize everything into items such as things you have to pay for, such as your housing and your utilities and, and maybe your cell phone, uh, things that you need for work, uh, groceries and more um, loose items such as entertainment, um, you know, clothing and those types of things that you probably can cut back in. I think the difference right now is I remember growing up, you looked at what something cost, you know, for the year, mm -hmm. but now everybody looks at their monthly payments. What is right. it per month? What is it per month? And that monthly payment accumulates very, very quickly. Exactly. Exactly. And we're living in an environment where we, there's a bit of a carp diem. 
right? Like, let's be honest. Right. That people are living in an environment right now that think that, well, if I want it, I should get it because I deserve it. And I really do blame uh, marketing and social media on this. I yes. mean, let's face it. I, you know, Facebook has got to be the worst thing that ever happened, uh, especially women, because I think they say 60% of people on there are women. Instagram uh, as well. And Instagram as well. And it tells you this lifestyle. You know, everybody's going out to parties. They've all got the great outfits on. They're Look at the beautiful meal that they have. They're, look at that wonderful vacation they're, that they're on. And it makes other people feel that they're not, they, that, hey, how come I'm not doing this? Why, I should be able to do this. And then people overspend to acquire this lifestyle that they can't afford. And look, you don't know whether these, these pictures they're posting are even from this year. Right. They could be from five years ago. Right. So don't be fooled by that. Well, it's funny because uh, the second show that we did, we had Carrie Taylor on, mm -hmm. and she was talking about FOMO, the fear of missing out. Right, yes, And exactly. that is pretty much one of the catalysts that puts a lot of young women into debt because they want that beautiful background. They want that beautiful outfit. Exactly. Uh, and then we were talking about the secondhand economy as well. Mm -hmm. And I was saying that I don't buy anything unless it's on sale. And right. that, that's my thing. That's excellent. Right? And yes. I don't, I bring my lunch to work every day. Yes. And it's funny because you and I have been talking about debt for probably 15 years At now. Least, or maybe even longer. Probably, yes. And, you know, through the years, I've learned a lot just talking to you and, and doing the show. And I actually have a problem going out and spending a lot of money in a restaurant or going out and spending $20 for a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. oh, because, good. yeah, you know, it, my money could go else, elsewhere. Exactly. It's all about choices. I think that that's one thing that you make, that's a very good point you make. It's all about choices. So I'm not, like at Credit Counter, we're not telling people how to spend their money or what they should or should not spend their money on. But you have to understand, and we all have, not, not, nobody has a limit, limitless amount of money. Not right. even the Kardashians yeah. have a limitless <laughs> amount of money. So we have to make decisions about where we want to spend our money and make wise decisions. And, and paying $3,000 for a $1,000 credit card balance is not a wise decision. You're giving, literally giving $2,000 of your money to the bank because you only pay the minimum payment. And that's the message I want to get across. Women uh, only make, I think, what does they say, 85% of what men make yes. around there? Yeah, we always make uh, less. So we, we unfortunately are already at a disadvantaged uh, situation. We're already in a disadvantaged situation. Mm -hmm. We have to be smarter with our money to make it go further. Not only that, we're all going to live longer as well. That's right. Women are going to live longer on less money. So we have to make the most of the money that we do have. The other thing, too, is not only do we live longer, but when you have somebody going through a divorce, you're splitting the assets in half. So mm -hmm. now you've got less money to retire on as well. You've got less money to retire on. And if you were not, uh, if you were not the individual, the person that was in charge of the finances, chances are you really not don't know what to do with that money that you do have. Right. And that's another struggle that so many women have. I mean, we see elderly women that have never written a check before. Um, that don't really understand, you know, they might have been saddled with some credit card debt and they really don't understand uh, what this means and, and whether they're responsible for it and how they should handle that. So there are many factors uh, that, that need to be considered and women need to educate themselves. There's a, there's a plethora of books out there, there's tons of information on the internet and women need to educate themselves because unfortunately um, we have a, a few things stacked against us. We do. And so what, what are your words of wisdom to help women out then? Somebody who has, I mean, there, I know there are a lot of women out there that have never written a check. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of women out there that think, you know what, I'll be okay and live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. Or uh, because they are living paycheck to paycheck, they have uh, amassed a large amount of debt. Right. Well, you know, debt and financial struggles are probably the number one cause of stress. There's no doubt. So thinking that you'll be able to live paycheck to paycheck and be able to manage your your finances is probably not going to work right. for anybody because it's too stressful. So for young women, I would say, before you get a credit card, understand the terms and conditions of that card, pay it off in full every month before you get your, you know, before you even get it. So you never see yourself in that situation. If you have a large debt situation and you don't know how to manage it, come to Credit Canada, get some help, get some free advice on how you can move forward so you know your rights and your obligations when it comes to credit and debt. If you're an elderly woman and you, you're struggling to understand how to manage your finances, get a trusted source. Go to your bank, uh, go to your financial planner to talk about how to manage your finances, but make sure it's a trusted source. You know, there's a lot of scammers out there that are very, very uh, willing to part with your money, willing to have you part with your money, and you wanna make sure you avoid that. And I think the, the key thing that you said is go and talk to somebody. My mother always said to me, if you don't ask, you don't know. Exactly. So when you don't know, because 
I'm pretty good at what I do at work, you're pretty good at what you do at work, but I'm sure that there are a lot of things out there that both of us don't know. So the first thing we would do is go and ask. And I don't think there's any shame in asking. Absolutely not. You know, the, the beauty of it is, is women are more willing to ask. I mean, 60% of the people coming through our doors are women. That's great. It's not because they have more debt. It's because they're more willing to get help. And I think that the stigma of shame and embarrassment um, is very, very difficult, but we try to take that out of the situation so people can feel that they're, they've got a trusted person that they can talk to. And it's important to ask for help. It's important to, to, to be self-educated so you read up on things. Never, ever, ever sign a document or contract that you don't understand and make sure you always ask around for other people's opinions before you make a decision. Agreed. We'll be right back after this break to talk more about women's finances here on Finances Personal. Hi, welcome back to Finances Personal. I'm Liz Namofsky and we've been discussing everything to do with women and their finances with Laurie Campbell, CEO of Credit Canada Debt Solutions. Now, Laurie, before we went to break, you know, you and I were talking about all these different ways that people get into debt. What I want to talk about right now are credit scores. Right. Can you explain credit scores and what's good and what's bad and, and do, we'll just go on from there. So I'm going to give you kind of a little bit of a, a window here. So 300 to, not, well, to go 300 to 900, let's say. That's the highest, obviously, is 900. The higher your credit score, the better. So okay. anything over 700 is pretty good. Anything under 500 or 600 is, is not so great. So the higher the credit score, the better. Obviously, paying your debts, your bills on time, every time. Don't miss a payment, think I'll just catch up next month. It will follow you into your credit score. Stability in your work, stability in where you live. The creditors have very interesting uh, algorithms for how they, they calculate that credit score, but you have to know that the longer the history of your information on the Bureau, the better it is for you and the more improved your credit score as long as it's good information. Um, if you don't have a whole bunch of credit cards or a whole bunch of debt outstanding, it actually works for you, not against you. A lot of people think, well, I'll, I just need a whole bunch of credit cards to build up my credit mm -hmm. rating. It actually works against, against you, you because what it shows is a whole bunch of open credit and, and the, the possibility of getting into financial difficulty with that open credit. So less is more. Make sure you have stability. The length of, of the history is very, very important, and stability in your life is very important to have a good credit score. So what happens if you pay your bills late all the time? If you pay your bills late all the time, you're going to be, your credit score is going to be continually affected, okay, okay over time. And, as the, and again, it's a history. It's a history of information. So if you consistently pay it late over time, that history is going to show. The other thing is, I know I've, I've heard of, uh, say, a father or a mother co-signing a loan mm -hmm. for their student child. Right, yes. And they have left it up to their child to pay the monthly whatever it is. But they, the kid doesn't do it. The kid doesn't pay the rent and the mother and father go and get their credit score read because they need to mortgage their home or something. Right. And their credit score is really, really low. Even though they aren't responsible for paying for the loan, but they co-sign for it. And you know, you make a very good point. You know, I just I, I was talking to a lady the other day. She had a cell phone for her daughter on her, on, on her, under her name. Uh -huh. Well, her daughter didn't pay and her credit score was affected immensely. Anytime you co-sign for anything, you are responsible, just like the, 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 the first borrower. And you have to understand that. I, I, I'm not a fan of co-signing for any reason, simply because you are at risk. So as, as I say that, you need to make sure that the borrower, the first borrower is paying. And if they're not paying, you need to be on top of it immediately and you need to pay because it will affect you. And that's just it. I mean, you're really putting yourself out at risk, even though you're trying to help somebody. Exactly. And so many people think, well, you know, I just thought I'd help them out. And, you know, they really ask. They're a good friend yeah, and, and yeah. that sort of thing. But the bottom line is it, it could impact you for a long time. Okay. So another impact you for a long time, payday loans. Um, I know a lot of people don't understand how they work. And a lot of people, I don't think, understand what the uh, what the percentage is that the payday loans take from your from your checks. Right. Okay. So you know, payday loans, the fastest growing population uh, using payday loans are millennial millennials, and it's like forty percent of them have used a payday loan. That's huge. That's a lot. That's huge, in my opinion. So yeah. that's scary business. Um, and so what the way it works is, for every hundred dollars you borrow, you have to pay back one hundred and twenty-one. Now this is a two-week period. 
So if you do the math on that, you think, okay, every $100 I have to pay back $21 over a year, that'd be 21%. That's not the way it works. It's over two weeks. And if you amortize that over the year, you're paying very, like over 60% in interest. But it's, it's legal because there's the Payday Loan Act that this falls under. You know, I was reading something about payday loans and it said that it is legal as long as it's under 61%. Mm -hmm. After 61%, I think the criminal code uh, jumps in. I I'm not ex exactly sure what it is, but I was astounded to find out it was 61%. Oh yeah, that's the, it is 61% for the, the criminal code, but this is, this is a weird category because it's, they're short-term loans. So it's really, you know, it's a really, I don't know, gray area, I guess, for people. And what happens, what we find for people who get payday loans, once they get one, they need another to pay off the first, and then they need the third to pay off the second. And by the time they come to see us, they owe five or six payday loans. And because they're behind, they're being charged a bundle uh, to, to get them caught up. So very dangerous situation. Uh, at all costs, people should avoid payday loans because it's a very, very expensive way to finance your, your, your future. Well, you'll never catch up though. You won't catch up. I mean, we've seen horror stories for people that they've just basically fallen apart because of getting a couple of payday loans. We had one situation where the, the man was evicted because he, his rent fell so far behind because of all these payday loans he was trying to service that he could no longer pay his rent. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Yes, it is. So let's talk about the stigma of getting help because a lot of people don't want, I mean, it's so easy to go out and ask for help. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's cheap, it's free, it's easy. Right. But a lot of people don't want to because there's a stigma attached to it, I'm weak or whatever. When it comes to money, like let's face it, it's, it's, nobody wants to talk about it. You yeah. don't know what your neighbor makes. You don't know what kind of debt or mortgage your neighbor has. You don't know even what your, your, your sister or your brother have as far as their financial situation, certainly not their friends. So, you know, the truth of the matter is nobody wants to talk about money. Nobody wants to talk about debt. And that's where we have to start lifting the stigma because so many people live in isolation. They live in fear about their financial situation and it causes huge stress. It causes health problems. It causes stress at home. It causes marital problems. Relationships. Relationships. It causes addiction problems. We see a lot of people with addiction problems coming in to see us. And the question is what came first? Mm -hmm. So people should feel free and comfortable, non-judgmental environment. Uh, to come to an organization like Credit Canada to talk about their finances because we've seen it all and we understand. We understand how e easy it is to get into financial difficulty and there are solutions out there for people. You know, I find, uh, well I found uh, as a younger woman, I was always invited to go out with my girlfriends. Let's go for dinner, let's go dancing, let's go do this, let's go do that. And it came to a point where I bought a house, I was house poor, mm -hmm. just like most people yes. are. and. I didn't want to go out because I actually couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And I emailed all of my friends on a mass email and just said, I'm not going out for this period of time right? because I need to stay at home. I need to study for something, but I'm not going out so that I can save my money and pay my mortgage. Right. And you know, nobody got upset by it. Everyone said, you know what? I understand, not a problem. So I don't understand why people are so afraid to just say, I, I can't go out for dinner tonight. You know, and I think that's a brave thing that you did because a lot of people are probably, a lot of your friends are probably in the same situation. Yeah. You know, you pro you're probably like a huge load <laughs> off of their backs. Like, thank goodness, I've got she spoke up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think that we need to have more open conversations like this because, you know, what's in days gone by, people didn't go out the way we do now. Yeah. I mean, they stayed home, they had potlucks, they had played cards, which I guess is a thing gone by, but I mean, you know, they did game night or whatever the case may be, something that's fun and, and cheap and simple. And we've got into this habit of thinking we have to go out and have the best time. And I guess again, for Instagram, that, yeah, for Instagram, that's that FOMO effect again. And people need to slow down, step back, and ask them what they really value, what's really important to them over the long term, just like you did. Those are awesome words to end this by. The best way to reduce debt-related stress is to talk about it with your partner or someone close to you. Efficiently pay off your loans at more than just the minimum and ask for help if you need it. It may seem daunting, but having an expert to help will allow you to find a specialized solution to your debt problem. And remember, there are an array of solutions and credit counselors available to you. All you need to do is ask and reach out. And remember, don't spend more than you earn. I'd like to thank Laurie Campbell for joining me and you, our viewers, for watching. I'm Liz Namofsky. Bye for now.